I'd like to talk today about how to operationalize AI. Why is this such a big topic? First of all, because it's only the 5 to 10 percent. Let's maybe Let's be positive. We're in a positive world here. Yeah? So maybe it's 10%. I think most, what I've seen so far when I come a little bit to my life history, I have seen a lot of companies working with AI. I was a little bit puzzled when um, Fabian this morning opened a conference and he said, hey, this AI thing is only five years old. Um, I was doing this already the last eight or nine years at least, and I think I'm not an, uh, uh, an early adopter when I spent a lot of my time the last couple of years with a big company with three letters, IBM, I switched to uh, PwC a couple of years ago um, to have more business focus on the theme of AI. And then, you know, what, what I'm interested in is not only the technical stuff, I will come to that, but also what is it all about and how can you make an enterprise successful by using it. So the journey between Concepts to outcomes is a big, big thing for a lot of companies. Let's try it this, this way. So in the end, it's applying a new technology and concepts to what we have in our existing eco ecosystem and bringing new ideas from a level that is entrepreneurial, prototypish, to something that really makes a difference in the enterprise. And answering this question, this is why I liked your segue in, and <laughs> was not kind of planned, is it, it's really a kind of big effort to do something like that. So in the end, if you want to start with a concept and want to have an outcome that's not only relevant for a couple of nerds, data scientists, and people working with data, is a big issue. And the whole thing is, in the end, very complex. So let me start to tell a story a little bit in terms of a couple of clients I worked with, and I'm mixing the things up, so you cannot identify a single company out of that, but I think that's a kind of, uh, kind of very common way in terms of how these things work. Most of the AI ventures I've seen in the last couple of years were all going into the way that you start with an idea, and normally it's one a business guy together with a data scientist sitting together and starting to brainstorm to have an idea that they have taken out there. And with all the good things that we are seeing in the internet and what we're seeing, what the big internet firms are doing, we have an impression that you can solve the real big questions of our time by using this new thing called AI, machine learning, deep learning. You all know the differences. So starting with that one, as a data scientist in a certain company, together with a marketing manager, for instance, they came up with the idea to think about customer segmentation in a certain market and to build something like a recommendation engine. A couple of you may have heard that. So what happens then? It all starts with this little thing here. In the end, it's the data scientist starting together with some input from the business to build a model. So let's look at that model a little bit deeper. So what are they doing? In the end, they start with collecting data, do some engineering cleaning about the data, train the model, pray, and if they're lucky, have some outcomes that you then can put into production in a certain way. They Normally, you're using a lot of technologies, stacks, we're currently deviating more to an open source world. Some of us are also working commercial tools. I don't, I come to this a little bit later. But in the end, that's the process. You come up with a result, and let's coming back to our data scientists and the marketing, uh, and the marketing guy. They came up with a new kind of segmentation, new recommendation engine. They think, hey, super, that is really great. Yeah. And then, next step is, they think, hey, we need to implement that as a process in our systems. So what are they doing then? We have this little model. The model let's wait, um, stands for itself, and then they start to approach the tech guys in the company, the IT guys, and say, hey, guys, I'd like to operationalize my model. And then the start, it starts the next discussion. Which kind of platform are we using? Maybe you're using a cloud service provider, Amazon, whatever, Google, 
Microsoft, IBM, whatever, I need to mention all of them at the moment, and then maybe they say, hey, I'm not operating that kind of platform, so what's happening? On the other hand, we may use tools that are not company standards, so we have no clue if these tools are you know, under our software licenses and stuff like that, are restricted, or do we know what these tools are doing to our data? We don't know. Lots of discussion. So what happens? They're trying to use this model and do a lot of so-called POCs in terms of proving that this kind of model with the technology they're using works with the existing technology setup in the firm. What you get then is the so-called POC hell. Yeah, I've been really through that, that I've seen companies producing 20, 30 proof of concepts. Some of them call them pilots. Some of them think that it's a minimal viable product, but it is not. It's just something like a proof of concept or technology proof. Spend hundreds of thousands of dollars into POCs without having one thing that is really implemented in the enterprise. So AI adoption in this case doesn't mean that AI adoption is really creating outcomes. It just means you're using the technology. And that's just one aspect. Let's assume that the whole thing went well. And these guys have found a way, the marketing manager, data scientist, started with the tech department. We have something now, let's work with it and let's try to operationalize it. We have now a platform, let's work. So next thing that comes into place is the whole thing around data. You know, this conference is kind of also about data, and we have this kind of discussions all over the place. So in the end, it's about using the right data. Let's assume the guy has done customer segmentation. Do we know which kind of data has he used to do this kind of segmentation? Things. As a data scientist, you know that. You know, you, I think a couple of you are data scientists in the room. You know that, that you may think sometimes, maybe I'm not waiting until I get an official data set. Let's try something with uh, and infuse some data, external data, whatever. You know, the easiest compliance, we are talking about it mainly here in this country, GDPR. Everybody knows about it. Don't use personal data. But it's much more complex. A lot of data sets can, use, can be used as soon as you're crossing data set with others, even the legal aspects on compliance change a lot. Next thing is about data quality and data sources. Data quality is a main issue in the industry since 15 years, 20 years. We're talking about data quality as the main source for all analytical problems. And if you just take that as, an, as a kind of idea and the problems behind data quality, we have not solved it so far. The sources in terms of how can I adopt ex external data, how can I buy to pay for it, how can I get a license for these kind of things, is also something that is really driving uh, a lot of energy around these kind of data discussions. Having the data will give you definitely the way to better outcomes, but also understanding the data and having the whole thing together is still a major problem in the enterprise. And you all know that because in the end, the biggest problems I've seen so far is to provide the right data sources to the data projects and the AI projects in the enterprises. I've seen in my life multi-million projects that have not been successful in the end only because the data that everybody assumed is somewhere existent in a certain enterprise company was not being able to discover or presented or to be used in a way that AI systems could work with it. So if you extend the model even more, then we come to, I think, the most important pieces beside technology and data. It's all about people. People who can work with AI are not only the people that are the AI specialists. And we have heard it, I think, in several kind of talks today. In terms of understanding AI is the first, how would I say, um, the first kind of foundation of really being clear in terms of what can I do with AI and how, how can I anchor it in an organization. Though that means for everything of these kind of projects, and I'm coming back to my data scientist and my marketing manager, in a lot of cases, there is some, someone, either a sponsor or something like that missing, who understands what it is all about. Let me extend the story here a little bit. We have done our customer segmentation recommendation engine, 
And you know, I think the marketing manager was kind of happy because he was assuming that he can have a better something like that 10% 10, 10 sales increase on certain products in a certain market if he applies certain ideas he got out of the model. The problem then was that his boss, the guy who was asking for the budget in this kind of cases and was responsible for the budget, promised something like a kind of miracle to his board with the great things AI can do. And 10%, to be honest, was not enough. So it's pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing to have something like these miracles that we always see in the Silicon Valley. You know, I always think how impressed I was when, I think it's three or four years ago, some data scientists predicted the Oscars by using uh, just like open source data from, from, from the internet and could predict who would be the, 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 the Academy Award winners. Something like that is in the mind of a lot of people in, in upper management in terms of how you use AI and some of these things in the end lead to the point that sponsors may overestimate what you can do and also have a kind of not real expectation for the outcome of AI. So that means if this guy is not happy, there may not be the next project. Skills is also a thing I'd like to talk about in roles as well. You may know that. I don't want to, know, I don't want to ask at the moment who is, who is the data scientist in the room, but in the end, I think we heard that in the last, I would say, four to five years on a regular basis. Coolest job on earth, sexiest job on earth. I tend to agree partly. It may be the sexiest job on earth, but without this guy, he has no chance to integrate anything into an ecosystem, an enterprise, or an organization. Though in the, in the end, the data engineer may be the most important job on earth. And you know, I'm also leading a team, so I'm hiring people for PricewaterhouseCoopers, and um, we're looking for data scientists, we're looking for data engineers. At the moment, my ratio is that I get 20 applications for data scientists to work with us, which I'm happy about, and if you have uh, a certain ambition, please contact me on that. And out of the 20 uh, uh, kind of applications, I'm getting one for a data engineer. And if you see what we want to do with AI, to implement it deeply into our ecosystems. It's so, much, it's so much more important at the moment not to have only the ideas and having the models, but also to make them real and to make them operational in the companies we're working in or the organizations we're working in. So you need these data engineers. And I think, to be honest, these are not the superstars because they don't have these kind of epiphany moments where you find a great kind of model that is solving something nobody has thought about before. These are the poor guys who have to arrange the technology, the data and all the stuff and need to bring things together in a maybe a little bit more boring way. So that's a, that's a big one as well. Adding the next thing is culture. Culture in a lot of enterprises, I'm coming, we're talking about Germany a lot here, but I think that applies in a lot of European countries as well. Culture is something that is not only giving us the ability to think about how to use technology in a certain way, it's also kind of the basic and foundation to, to, to cope with this whole change that we are in. Yeah? If you think that 50% or more of the jobs that we are seeing in the in our, in, in, in our society at the moment, will be somehow in, infected by AI. And we have heard that all over the place, it's 50%, the other ones have 45, I don't care. It's almost every second job description will be affected by, uh, uh, by artificial intelligence. If you don't have a culture that is currently embracing that and supporting that in your organization, you may have a problem. And a couple of these things I'd like to go a little bit deeper. First of all, the whole thing around being um, data-driven. I have the point, as always, uh, in terms of if I look at Germany, that's my, my, my little view of being in data for the last 20 years, I may be a little bit biased. Looking at Germany and the European market is most of the companies I'm working with, and I'm talking brick and mortar, I'm not talking about the new internet startups and so on and so forth, they all think about process first. So it's all about how can I build a better process, improve a process, whatever, build a new SAP system or something like that, or ERP system to be neutral here, um, and, 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 and just do something to make my organization more optimized on my processes. Isn't this a failure in thinking? Don't we need to talk and to think about enterprises that are based on assets? 
assets mean, I think it was mentioned in another uh, speech beforehand, it's the capital of the enterprise. What is the capital of an enterprise? It's production facilities. It's necessarily the people around it. It's maybe also the financial capital you have, depending on your business model. And it's, if you really want to embrace AI, it's data. It's an asset. And all these things together may work together through a process, and the process may produce data, but the process is just something that connects all these things to make something out of it. If you think about the classical thinking of an enterprise, in most of the brick and mortar industries, they think about data just being a product out of the process, and not the other way around. And I think that is something, I think, just think about it. If you don't have that thinking in your enterprise, it's really hard to embrace the new technology because that's all the basics, that's the fuel we're all working with, is the data where we can place our AI models and our AI applications on. Next thing, and I think you know that as well, it's also something that's pretty rare, is the acceptation, as, to, you need to accept failure, not all, only as a single person, as a group, as a team. If you try out, coming back to my story about the data scientist and marketing manager, if you don't have the right results in the first place, you may need to reconsider the approach and try it again. You may need to reconsider that again. That's not part of the DNA of most of the companies we're working in. We have a lot of CEOs who tell you, yes, we, we accept failure. One time. Yeah. Uh, that's reality. And if you, if you think about it from a, in terms of how do you make these kind of things successful, and if you think about entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirits that we see in other countries, like, in the, like in, uh, in, in the Silicon Valley, which is all about that, you know how many startups have failed there. There's only one Facebook, there's only one Google, there is no Yahoo anymore. Yeah? So that sees also there is failure is part of the process. And if you think about that also in a small way, in terms of just getting, uh, applying AI to one or the, single pro, uh, one or the other process, Except, say, uh, the accept of failure is, a, is one of the most important uh, uh, cultural kind of factors to make AI real in the enterprise. The last thing I like to talk about is governance. Why governance? If you start AI projects, I think it's important to select ideas wisely. I said, yes, we need the failure kind of culture as well, but also the, I, the, the point around that one is it's never, I, I've not, not seen one company I've working with where it was, where we lacked ideas. You know, seeing all these kind of jams that are happening in a lot of enterprises where ideas are gathered and these idea competitions and stuff like that, that's all important, super important. You need to harvest these ideas. But you will soon, soon find out, if you look in your organization, that there are enough ideas. The problem is to come from the idea to reality. And this means also that you have to select ideas that you want to drive further by applying something like a metric in the beginning. You need to think about the value. I'm not talking ROI here. Value can be everything. It doesn't need to be a commercial value, it doesn't need to be a financial value, but you need, you need to define what is the value you want to get out of it. And if you define the value out of an idea and you, what you want to achieve, you can measure your idea if you, after you have implemented it and you look at the outcome and to think about it in terms of has it delivered the value. And I think that process in terms of governance is so important uh, because we are sometimes missing the point in terms of also taking the stakeholders with us and to make sure why we are doing this. And sometimes we're doing this kind of AI stuff, I would say, we're trying it, at least in some of the experiments I've seen, just because it's cool. Yeah? And just because it's cool, maybe not enough. So in the end, it's about the value case in the beginning. It's about working about ideation. It's about the measurement of the outcomes. So you really have something uh, that really goes from concept to outcomes. I call this thing kind of the AI molecule. That is something I put together because I think molecules are also complex. And you know, in the reality, and if you're really working in this space, you will see all these things affect you. And if you're not taking care of all of, the, all of these balls in parallel and get these things in, there's a high likelihood that a, the AI initiative to drive uh, AI in an enterprise may fail. So what's the conclusion in terms of coming from concepts to outcome? Uh, is something, I think it's feasible, we're seeing it, we're seeing more and more success, but an enterprise has to live it. 
It's not something you can just do by having this poor data scientist together with the poor marketing manager and then some around and then rescue my company with AI. So learnings from my perspective uh, that I'd like to, uh, to hand over to you is, first of all, we really see organizations massively failing to adopt AI for the reasons I've just shown. Think holistically. It's not a tech game, it's not only a culture game, it's not only a people game, it's not only a data game, it's not only a tech game, it's not only governance, it's the combination of all of it. And if you think holistically, there's a good chance that you move your organization. Third thing, everybody needs to be involved. If we think that AI may be successful in adoption in enterprises organization, we need to be aware that the culture and the knowledge about artificial intelligence, starting with the definition of what it is, is an important factor and is one of the key factors to drive the success. So everybody needs to be involved. And with involved, I mean really involved, more as a pig than a chicken. So it's complex and it's also something I would say we are all tackling. I wish you in your organizations all the success with these kind of things because I think we need it to take also the opportunity to compete with the other parts of the world, as we have seen the main stage, to drive artificial intelligence to success in Europe and in Germany. Thank you for your attention.